Hi guys, welcome to my month 19 post VSG update. How are you? <laughs> I hope you're all doing really well. I am coming around to a better headspace. <laughs> uh, let me give you my stats. I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy, which is a weight loss surgery on October 20th, 2016 in Morristown, New Jersey at Morristown Medical Center. My high weight starting weight day of surgery was 265. I'm five foot eight. I am now 31 years old. Uh, last month, a month ago, I came to you at 173 even. This month I come to you at 179 even. So that is a six pound gain for the month. However, if you were watching my uh, weekly keto updates, I'm up like three and a half pounds from last week. So <laughs> what happened? I had uh, five weeks of deep keto coaching with Crystal Love, and um, I have a playlist of those weekly videos that I will link below if you're interested in watching what that was about. Um, the full Deeper State Keto course that uh, Keto Connect and Keto Savage have put out is a 12-week thing. I did a five-week version of it with one-on-one -on -one coaching with Crystal Love. During that five weeks, I lost, what was it, like seven and a half pounds? Um, and this week was my first week off of that program. So I decided that this week I was just going to eat intuitively and just listen to my body. And guess what? I'm not very good at that. <laughs> Even though I did not eat crazy, it's not like, oh, all the ice cream, you know, like I really... <sighs> Sorry, I feel like I have an eyelash. I really think I, in my mind, I was eating on plan, but I decided not to track. I just wanted to like see what happened. And um, I ate a lot of protein and a lot of vegetables, which if you follow the keto, deep keto thing, uh, protein is lower than fat. And there's not a whole ton of vegetables because um, they have a lot of fiber. They cause a lot of bloating, et cetera, et cetera. So I hadn't eaten a whole lot of vegetables. I had eaten some spinach here and there some cabbage and things like that, but I hadn't eaten a ton of vegetables and my protein had been kind of low. I think in that last week I was on 60 grams of protein a day. So anyway, this week I didn't track. I just ate intuitively. I ate tons of protein, lots of vegetables, gained three and a half pounds, felt so bloated, you guys, like, and sluggish and tired in a way that is um, surprising. You know, I really kind of wonder if this is just placebo or not, but I mean, seriously, like my pants were tight. <laughs> that's not placebo. That's bloating. Um, also totally TMI, but I pooped and pooped and pooped so much, <laughs> not in a bad way, just in a lot, um, way. Uh, I think because my body was like, get this out of here. We don't need it. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Don't know how to process it. Get it out. So, um, very interesting. I consider this week a week of like self-experimentation. I've learned a lot and that's okay. Lesson learned. I feel better on moderate protein, higher fat. And I know this is pretty different from the way I was eating maybe three months ago, but I think that's the point of this whole journey, weight loss thing, post weight loss surgery, life, life in general is to always learn about your body, always learn what works better and better and better for you and adapt and keep going and take what you like and leave what you don't and move on with your life. So uh, that's where I am. Um, I, in the last like two or three days, I've decided to go back to high fat, moderate protein, uh, the low carb, I've always done low carb. So that's, that's not an issue either. So I already feel less bloated. I already feel better. It's amazing how that happens, how your body responds so quickly. So I feel really good. I feel like progress in any sense is good <laughs> and is progress. And I feel like this week I really learned that lesson for myself. So I'm not mad about it, even though it's a gain. I do expect I'm hoping for a loss next week. So, I mean, next month. So here's the thing. I have a lot of things coming up. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to staff a quiz bowl tournament in Atlanta. If you guys remember uh, from last year, I, I do quiz bowl every year. And I will uh, tell you guys more about that in the next video. <laughs> um, uh, the week after that, I'm going to WLSFA in San Antonio. If you guys ha are going and you haven't told me yet, please comment below. I'm so excited to meet everybody. Please come say hello. Please talk to me. I loved it last year. I love any kind of meetup. I love meeting people from the community. So I'm so excited about that. Um, 
And then the week after that, my husband and I are going to be in Berlin uh, visiting my cousin. I've been before. My husband hasn't been before. I actually studied abroad for a semester in Germany, so I've been there uh, extensively, but that was more than 10 years ago. So I'm really excited about that. Then when I come back, I will get back into like my full deep keto thing. So um, the next couple of weeks, honestly, I'm not even like worried that they're going to be tough. I feel well prepared. Um, somebody asked that I show what I eat while I travel. Um, when I travel, it's really hard to film a lot because I like to be present in the moment and experiencing the things that I'm experiencing and not like behind a camera all the time. However, for um, Atlanta and for Berlin, I do plan to at least film one like full day of eating video for each of those. Um, I've posted a few of those on my channel so far and you guys seem to like them. So thanks for watching and I will definitely post those after I get back, after I have some time to do some editing. So that'll be fun. Um, what else? Oh, okay. So I've mentioned this before, but I don't know if I've like super fully announced it, but I am competing in an Ironman half triathlon at the end of September. It's September 23rd in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Um, what this entails is, uh, I think it's a two mile swim, 60 mile bike ride, and then a half marathon run. So 13.1 mile run. Um, I have been training the running part. I feel really strong running, which I never thought would happen, but running has almost, almost become easy for me. Easy physically, not mentally. I still get kind of bored. Listening to podcasts has helped instead of like listening to music. So yeah, but now that it's warmer and almost summer, when I get back from Germany, I'm going to focus the summer on swimming and biking because I feel strong in those already. You guys might recall I was a competitive swimmer for many, many years and I just, I love swimming. So swimming and biking, I don't think will be as hard for me to train um, as running was. So I'm going to do that in the summer. Then I'm going to go back to running and then the race is in end of September. So this has been my plan for quite some time. Um, and by pure coincidence, the other day I was in the gym and I didn't feel like running. So I went to a Pilates class. There was a substitute teacher. So this woman who also works at our gym, but like I had never met her before and uh, no one else showed up to, to the class. So it was just me and her. And um, we kind of got to talking about, you know, the exercise I'd done in the past. And I told her, you know, normally I run, but today I felt like doing Pilates and I'm training for a race. And she said, oh, what race? And I said, well, it's a half marathon. And she said, oh, which one? I was like, well, actually it's part of a half triathlon. Like I don't like opening with that because it sounds kind of silly, I think. Um, but she was like, oh, which one? And I was like, uh, the one in Atlantic, Atlantic City in September. She was like, oh yeah, it turns out this woman has done, what did she say? Like 16 full Ironmans and like six or eight halves. So she is like super into triathlons in general. And, um, and that's just the Ironman brand. There's like other kinds of triathlons too. So she's done a ton of them and she was like so excited to meet me and that I'm like a little baby in this world <laughs> and that I very, very obviously did not know what I was doing, um, <laughs> in terms of training and like for a triathlon specifically. So I told her, oh, I've been reading books and you know, um, and she said, well, what brand is your bike? And I was like, I don't have a bike yet. I was going to buy one soon. And she looked at me like I had three heads and she was like, I will give you a bike. I was like, no, 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 no. You don't have to do that. I can buy a bike. And she was like, no, I get a new one for every season. So I have lots of really good bikes that are in great condition. I will lend you a bike. I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. So, um, anyway, then she started showing me videos and like, she wants me to come biking with her training group over the summer. And it was just like this incredibly fortuitous, wonderful blessing <laughs> to meet this woman. I couldn't believe it. Um, so I'm really happy to have her as a resource just for like specific things. Like I'm not sure about the transition. So like after you swim, then you bike, but like, where do you keep your stuff? And like, do you have time to dry off? Does that still count as your time? Like you have to change, you have to put on shoes obviously. And like, I guess I need a helmet and I don't know, like specific nitpicky things as far as like physically, can I do it? I'm not going to be the fastest one there. <laughs> I might be the slowest one there. I just plan to finish and I'm not really concerned about my time. But I, what I am a little bit worried about is like the technical things. So I'm glad to have her as a resource for that. And um, yeah, I just, I felt like that was a really great <laughs> gift from the universe that happened in my life. So um, that's exciting. I will continue to keep you guys posted on that. Oh, you know what else is kind of weird? Um, when I've been running only lately, I have been feeling the loose skin in my belly jiggle. 
Um, and not just like my lower belly, but like my upper belly, almost like right below my boobs. That part of my belly is jiggling. And I don't know what that means. I, I want to believe that that means I have more muscle and less fat and it's like less filled in generally. And so it's loose and shaking around. Um, that's just a theory though. (laughs) I, because obviously I've gained weight in the last month or so. Um, so, so I don't know, but that's become uncomfortable. And I'm thinking about maybe starting to wear those like waistband waist trainer things just to have like compression support because even like high waisted leggings only come up like right above my belly button. And this is happening like rib cage under my boobs jiggle and it's uncomfortable and it's weird. Um, And if I'm going to be running a long time, I don't want to have to deal with that. So I need to start figuring that out. If you guys have tips on like upper belly compression, (laughs) let me know. Um, What else? Oh, I recorded a podcast with Keto Connect and it's going to be posted on June 3rd. So not this Sunday, but next. I will link to that below if you guys are not familiar with podcasts. I wasn't until kind of recently. You can listen to it on your computer, or if you have um, an iPhone, you can just use the podcasts app. And uh, the name of the podcast is called Keto for Normies. Um, Or if you have an Android, you have to download some podcast app. There are tons. So you can use any podcast app and then search for Keto for Normies. The one that I like is called Podcast Addict. So search for that one or any podcast app, search for Keto for Normies. It'll post, I mean, Honestly, this podcast, I listen to it all the time when I run. I really like it. They often have like experts on different medical conditions and things like that, but sometimes they have just like normal people too. And I guess I fall into that category of just like a normal person who lives a low carb slash keto lifestyle. So, um, but I do believe I'm the first person on their podcast to be a weight loss surgery patient. So I was really like aware of that because I don't, I feel like I can't speak for everybody. I'm not an expert in anything. I can only speak about my own experience. And I tried to make that clear um, when I when I was in the podcast. But I was so nervous. And I honestly wish I had recorded it on my end, but I didn't. So I don't even remember what I said. And I'm nervous about listening to it when it comes out. But um, yeah, I will link to that below. And you guys go listen. And uh, hopefully I didn't do terrible. And if I did, I apologize in advance. <laughs> um, what else? I think that's it. Oh, you know, I've just been thinking about what <laughs> what it means to be a normal person. I guess I think about that a lot. And um, I've been thinking about this, like, eating intuitively and things like that. And um, I think my husband is probably the only example I have nearby that I can, like, constantly observe of someone who doesn't really struggle with their weight. He's tall. He's thin. He eats in my mind, he eats whatever he wants all the time and like doesn't seem to gain weight, doesn't seem to lose weight. He's just like a normal healthy weight. But the more I I think about it, the more I don't think there's anybody in the world who like actually doesn't think about their weight. I think for some people it's just easier or maybe more intuitive to control it. But my husband will go through phases where he won't eat breakfast because he's not hungry And then maybe if he's not hungry for lunch, he'll skip that too. And then he'll just have dinner. And we in our world would classify that as like a one meal a day or fasting or this and that. And like, he doesn't know any of that. He doesn't like categorize or labels or plans or anything. He just does whatever, whatever he feels like. And sometimes that means if he's not hungry, he doesn't eat sometimes for a whole day. And, um, sometimes he'll eat a lot of fried foods, which are carby. Sometimes he'll eat a lot of meats, which are not. Sometimes he'll drink coffee. Sometimes he doesn't. And it's it's interesting to me because the more I think about it, he's not eating junk food 24-7 every single day. Sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. And he kind of goes through these phases. And I think on some level, like not in a conscious level, he's maintaining and controlling his weight in that way. So it's interesting to me because I think he is doing a lot of things that research has told us are good and healthy, like these uh, longer fasts, one meal a day, low carb, carb cycling, I don't even know. But like, he hasn't done it as a result of research or study, he just does it because that's what feels good to him. And so I think that's what's different is that he is capable of knowing what feels good and responding accordingly. And I'm not. I think like, oh, I haven't eaten in five hours, it's time to eat, even if I'm not hungry. Like, I have a hard time assessing if I'm hungry or not, honestly. So um, I don't know if that's necessarily a goal I can work towards, but in this week, I've realized this sort of intuitive eating thing, It's I, maybe someday I'll get there, but right now I'm not there. Right now I need a plan. I always need to have a plan, and whether it's very restrictive or very loose or counting macros or not counting macros, I need to know what I'm doing. I'm not the sort of person who can just be let go <laughs> and eat whatever you want and not gain weight. 
I don't know, maybe over like a very long amount of time, it would work itself out. But um, I think people that we see as the sort of people who never worry about their weight do control their weight just in a less conscious way. Does that make sense? I don't know. I've just, I've just been thinking about this a lot lately. Even like my coworkers who are just like always thin and they don't really work out. Sometimes they eat more and sometimes they eat less. Like it's, it's <laughs> whereas me before surgery, before weight loss, I just ate like a lot of everything all the time <laughs> and they don't do that. So, um, I, I'm coming around and I think this is helpful to know that there aren't people who eat like junk food 24 seven and don't gain weight. That does not exist. But what does exist is people who aren't actively like thinking about a food plan because it just kind of comes naturally to them. So that to me is more of an attainable thing. It makes me feel less weird. <laughs> um, if I have to think about a food plan, that's okay. But like on some level, everybody's on a food plan. They just, either they know it or they don't. Does that make sense? I'm rambling. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think about like normal people, <laughs> people who have never struggled with their weight, people who aren't actively trying to lose weight or gain weight or do anything with their weight, people who just like seem to live. Um, Tell me what you think and what you've observed. Because, you know, my parents were both kind of active. My dad was diabetic. My mom was always on Weight Watchers. Like, they were very much always kind of in tune with their weight as well. So um, I don't have a whole lot of examples in my own life of people who don't really think about their weight except for my husband. So I've just been observing and thinking. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for hanging out. I will uh, talk with you guys soon. Okay, bye.